Hey guys, Enzo here from Enzo's Geckos. It's finally leopard gecko season. What I mean by that is it's really leopard gecko breeding season because uh, it's always leopard gecko season for me. But um, today I just wanted to show you guys a little bit about what I do to prep here for breeding season. Here's the first baby I produced of last year. You guys have probably seen her in the YouTube videos a little bit, but I just wanted to show you guys how she's doing. I'm keeping her as a breeder. And even if I don't breed her, she's definitely going to stay as a pet because she's the first one um, I produced. And, uh, you know, the start to my journey as a leopard gecko breeder. But anyway, I want to go over some stuff that I like to prep before um, leopard gecko breeding season starts and what I like to do during the season. So now that I've got more space and I only have one more 2019 baby to go, one more to sell, all I have to do is set up my racks and, of course, set up my breeders. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the breeders. So here's one of the breeders that I have right now. I'll put her back while I explain a little bit about this. So with the breeders for the females, I just get, you know, a couple of simple uh, containers, plastic containers, cut a little hole out of them, and I'm going to fill these with eco-earth, uh, make sure it's nice and moist so that the female geckos have enough uh, humidity for when they're laying eggs, and so that the eggs, once they are laid, they can be in here. Um, in case I don't check for a couple days, they'll still be able to, you know, thrive and be in here for a little bit before I put them in the incubator. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill a couple of these up with eco-earth. We're going to get them in some of the gravid females' uh, hides, uh, you know, homes so that they now do have a place to lay eggs um, just a couple weeks before uh, they actually lay just so that they get you know comfortable with their new place to lay an egg rather than just throw it in the day that they should be laying an egg or a couple days before just so they you know get used to the change and then after that is all ready and all the females have their places to lay I get the incubators ready all right so down here is where I keep the incubators I got my two incubators I got my female and male incubator as you can see I don't know if you can actually it says 90 degrees, good, male one is good. It's a little bit smaller um, than the female one, but that's fine because I'm gonna be incubating many less males than I will females. Next one, female incubator. This thing's kind of funky, doesn't always show the right temp, so I gotta adjust it. It's 80 degrees, which is exactly what we want it to be for females. So what I will do in here is I get all of my egg boxes, just like this. See, they're right, completely empty right now. I'm gonna fill them up with some incubation medium put these in here and get them ready to go so that once the eggs start rolling out I can get these going and uh, right on the top of these and get all the female uh, get all the females ready get all these egg boxes you know I got plenty of these left so you know I could even you know if you really wanted to you can just put you know one or two eggs in a really small one like this um, I like tend to do this toward the end of the season when I don't have a lot of eggs left maybe get one or two extra ones so you know totally fit in here really small um, as long as you have a little hole so for this one for this little hole what I do is I just get a pin, poke it in there, and it's super simple. So yeah, I've got about four of these right now that can all be filled up with, you know, eight eggs. So eight times four is 32, so that's 32 eggs that uh, we could potentially have in here. And then the male incubator, of course, but there's way more space than 32. That's just what I have right now. But of course I could, uh, you know, I'm going to be expecting more than 32. So now let's move on to the hatching rack. All right, right here is the new hatching rack. This is an 18 spot hatching rack. Sea serpents, what I do, I just get one of these tubs, get these little hide boxes, right? It's just a little meat tray or something like that, some kind of food uh, tray. I cut them up, cut a little hole out for them, and it sits just like this, and the baby geckos actually love to be in here. So um, it's a perfect little hide in the back. If you can see, um, I'm not sure if you can very well, but there is insulated, or not insulated, but there is you know good heat tape right here. Sea serpents is a great uh, rack uh, maker for reptiles, for any reptiles that you want to keep. My other hatching rack, the 10, uh, 10 space one, is also sea serpents. And then right here is just what I use to take photos on. I'm working on getting a little photo booth or putting these outside somewhere um, once the weather starts to get nicer so that they won't, you know, get all dirty and nasty. And I'm going to find a good place for them. And what I'm actually going to do in this video is I'm going to move my last two geckos uh, for sale into this hatching rack and get the uh, thermostat set up on this one because you probably see there is no thermostat on here. So once my hatching rack is set up, then I go to actually recording my pairings and writing it down so I'm ready for the babies to hatch. Alright, I'm going to put this little female right into her new home right here in this hatching rack. This one's done, one more to go. By the way guys, I do use disinfectant on these. 
just to make sure they're perfectly clean um, before the new geckos come in to here. And then also, obviously, keep the same food bowls, keep the same hides um, when I do transfer the geckos just so they are used to it. So the only difference is, is like they're, they're uh, you know, they're, they just got a new clean cage pretty much. Um, so this stuff will still smell like them and they'll still be used to it. So there we go. Now we are all ready. We've got the two last two hatchlings right here. The rest, you know, the other 16 of these are going to be filled out within the next couple of months, which is really exciting. So um, let's get to set up the thermostat. All right, so Vivarium Electronics, great thermostat company, know what they're doing. They've got quality products. This is V200, and I've got this little thing right here. I'm going to put it on the heat tape so that once it warms up, um, it can give it feedback so it doesn't overheat them or keep them too cold in here, which will be just perfect. Another thing I wanted to add, um, what I did last year, is I had these little, right, these little side things right here on the front. So I used to have these on the front, and I just kind of want to get a better view of the geckos. It kind of covered it a little bit, so now I think it looks better that I can, you know, look in there and actually see the gecko, and if I want information on them, just pull it out, take a look, so then it forces me to, you know, get a good look at the gecko along with the information on here, because this is really important when I'm, uh, selling to folks, of course. What I'm simply doing is I'm just putting a little bit of tape on this little thing right here to put in kind of the middle, middle row of the heat tape right down here, so it'll get a very good reading of this whole entire rack. Alright, so now that that's set up, I'm going to check back in on it in about 20-30 minutes to take a look and see how it looks. Um, in that time, don't worry, these ones will be safe, it won't get too hot, you know, they're obviously not going to get too cold. So, um, if something doesn't work out and it seems to be too hot, or doesn't quite get up to 90 degrees, you know, 92, um, I'm going to put them right back in the other rack because that one worked perfectly fine. And I wouldn't see a reason this one doesn't work because it's never been used either. So um, I think it should be totally fine. Alright, so right here you can see my 2020 pairing list. The pairing ID number, the date paired, male, female. And then more information, the pairing details, which is pretty much just what I write here. So you can see we've got the males on this side, females on that side. The pairing ID number, 20 p one 2020, P is for pairing, 01, first pairing. 20, P02 through P05, you know, P01 through P05 comes down here. We've got the date, these all happened on the same date, which was crazy, we got five pairings in one day. These are all the males that were involved, only three of them, five females involved, of course. And yeah, so now we have the pairings all set up on there so we know um, when they were paired, so we can pretty much expect eggs probably around the end of this week to the end of next week, it's kind of a wide, amount but I've already checked some of the females for eggs and I want to show you guys that in a sec. Alright guys so I just want to show you a quick example of a female that's about to lay an egg or not about to but a female that is absolutely developing an egg right there. So you guys can see this big old white thing right here that is an egg. So this beautiful little clown girl is absolutely about to have lay an egg in a couple of weeks. It's already looking great. I mean that's a really good development. I'm not going to flip her over again and show you because you guys already saw it but you know I'm just you know really amazed. Um, at how, uh, how great the season is going to look for these guys. Alright, you know what, this female clown is also showing a great example. You guys can see this white thing right there. That's also an egg. So, you know, sometimes females lay their first egg is, uh, you know, only one egg. Other times they'll lay uh, two eggs their first time. But it's not uncommon for geckos to lay uh, one egg their first time laying in the year or their first time ever laying. Um, so, that's amazing that we already can see some egg development in literally one week. Um, since they've been paired. So that's super amazing. Um, yeah, it's it's just great to see um, to see some uh, some eggs because we know we're going to get some eggs, we're going to get some babies, and I cannot wait for those. So can't wait to keep you guys updated on those also. All right, now we got these two things right here. You can see there is the vermiculite in there, vermiculite in there. These are all ready to go. So once they lay the eggs, I'm just going to spray them down a little bit. I'll do talk about that in another video, how much uh, water to add to these for when they're ready to go. Then I'm going to put the eggs in, but for now I'm going to put these right into the incubators. Let them sit there for a little bit until we get eggs in a couple weeks. Alright guys, so that is pretty much how I set up the leopard gecko season. I'm going to create some of these hides off camera. And I'm going to put them in the females' uh, enclosures. Just going to put some Ego Earth, put some water, mix it up, make sure it's nice and moist so that once they shed, it's perfect for them. Once they lay eggs, it's perfect for them to lay their eggs in. So, yeah, you guys pretty much saw how I set up my adults, so uh, well, females always put the moist hide bins in there, of course, humid hides. 
for the males. I just kind of keep an eye on them, make sure that, you know, they're doing fine for the season. The males, you don't really need to worry about. Just care for them like it's any other time during the season. Just don't overbreed them. Hatchlings, set up the hatching rack down there. It looks amazing. We've got the thermostat going. Um, you know, it's working. Sure enough, it says it's 92 degrees, which is exactly what we want it to be. Also, we went over how I'm going to change the labeling for the season. So I'm going to put the stuff on the side so I can see the geckos a little bit better. And um, the last thing that we did go over is just writing down the pairings, of course, on the board so that I'm ready and I know what, what to expect, when to expect eggs, from which female, so then if something's wrong, I can go back and look. Also, you know, setting up the incubators, getting them all ready, getting them started a couple weeks or, you know, months before eggs are actually going to be in there is great to do just to make sure your gear is working because, you know, incubator is going to be on for six months, you know, it's going to be on for a while. It could be on for six to eight more months from now without being turned off at all. So it's really important that, you know, I have the equipment that works the right way. Same with these thermostats. I mean, these are on all the time. They don't turn off during the day. They don't turn off during the night. I got to make sure that it always stays, you know. 90 degrees, you know, on the warm side of the cage. So that's really important uh, to have the right equipment, which of course I do. But we're ready to get some eggs, we're ready to hatch some hatchlings, and we are ready to obviously get some more photos for them and post because I haven't been posting lately and I really want to show you guys uh, what's going to be coming this season. So uh, I'm going to try and get on posting, you know, weekly, if not more, because um, I really just want to keep you guys updated. Same with my Instagram. As soon as babies start coming, I'm going to get a photo of every single baby on there. I promise. So uh, I'll see you guys next time. I appreciate you guys spending your time to learn a little bit more about leopard gecko breeding, how I prep it, how a lot of other breeders do it, and um, yeah, pretty much how the process goes. Thanks, guys.